Understanding basic concepts of hydrology is essential to understanding how floods occur, how floodplains are defined and mapped by FEMA, how flood risks are estimated, and other important aspects of the National Flood Insurance Program. In this presentation, as a first step toward understanding hydrology, you will learn about the following three topics. The definition and identification of watersheds, the definition and description of rivers, including the floodplains of rivers, and the beneficial functions of floodplains. These key terms and acronyms will be used during this presentation. You can find the terms and their definitions at the web address on screen. The total land area that drains surface water to a common point or common body of water is called a watershed. Synonyms for watershed include river basin, drainage basin, and catchment. Watersheds can be as small as a parcel of ground that drains into a pond or as large as the 2.38 million square miles in South America that drain into the Amazon River and its tributaries. Closer to home, the Mississippi River watershed, including the drainage basins of the Red, Arkansas, Platte, Missouri, Ohio, and Tennessee rivers, drains 1.26 million square miles in the United States and Canada. The entire state of Iowa, for example, is located in the Mississippi River watershed. The Hydrologic Unit Code, or HUC, is used to classify watersheds by the size of their drainage area. As the HUC number increases, the size of the watershed decreases. The boundaries of a watershed can be identified by first locating the lowest point, or watershed outlet, on a topographic map showing contour lines representing the elevations of the land. Then, higher elevations can be followed until a high point or ridge is identified. A watershed's total size, maximum and minimum elevations, shape, slope, and drainage patterns are all important factors that affect drainage and flooding. And knowing these factors can help hydrologists, scientists who study moving water, estimate flood potential. Water is carried through and out of a watershed by a river or stream and the tributaries that flow into it. The site at which a tributary joins the main river channel is called the confluence and the point at which the main river empties into a large water body, such as a larger river, ocean, or gulf, is the river's mouth. Some rivers travel in relatively direct routes to their destinations due, in most cases, to faster water velocity from a steeper channel slope, geologic rock formations that slow erosion, or both. Other rivers develop meanders. Meanders are broad, looping bends in a river caused by the natural behavior of flowing water. The outer edges of meanders suffer erosion as the water scours against them, while the inner sides become areas where geologic material is deposited. Floodplains are a natural feature of rivers. They form due to the actions of the water carried downstream by the river. During a flood, water leaves the main river channel and inundates the land areas adjacent to the river. The width of a floodplain depends on many factors, including topography, the size of the watershed being drained by the river, the volume and velocity of water carried by the river, the frequency of flooding, and the nature of the soils found in the watershed. Floodplains may be as narrow as a few hundred feet or as wide as many miles for larger rivers such as the Missouri and the Mississippi. Unfortunately, a river's floodplain is often viewed as something completely separate from a river's active channel. It is only during and after major flood events that the connections between a river and its floodplain become more apparent. The river and its floodplain together form a complex physical and biological system that provides a number of critically beneficial functions. These include reducing the number and severity of floods. Except in narrow, steep valleys, floodplains provide a broad area to spread out and temporarily store floodwaters. 
One acre of floodplain land flooded one foot deep holds 330,000 gallons of water. This reduces downstream flood peaks and velocities. And in their natural vegetated state, floodplains slow the rate at which incoming overland flow reaches the river channel. Improving water quality. Water that runs off quickly over the surface is capable of carrying with it large amounts of sediment and debris to the river channel. A vegetated floodplain, however, slows the surface runoff, causing it to drop most of its sediment load on the floodplain. Vegetation also helps filter nutrients and other impurities from incoming floodwaters. Wetlands are a vital component of many floodplains. Wetlands capture surface waters running toward the river channel and flood waters that spread over the floodplain during a flood. The storage capacity and vegetation of the wetlands then act to stabilize stream flows and filter out nutrients and impurities. Providing habitat for plants and animals. Floodplains are also home to many types of plants and animals. The floodplain provides habitat for insects, birds, reptiles, amphibians, and mammals. Additionally, vegetated floodplains provide shade for the adjacent rivers and streams, increasing dissolved oxygen levels and consequently improving habitat for aquatic plants and animals. Providing community benefits. Communities that view floodplains as natural assets instead of problem areas to be engineered out of existence benefit from the results. Parks, bike paths, open spaces, and wildlife conservation areas make communities more appealing to citizens, potential employers, property owners, and visitors. When the floodplain itself is altered by clearing vegetation or by building subdivisions, commercial development, or parking lots, the natural benefits of the floodplain are reduced or lost altogether. Today, you have learned the definition of a watershed and how to identify the boundaries of a watershed on a topographic map, the definition and identification of rivers and floodplains, and the beneficial functions of floodplains.